What's a arcology? The concept of the arcology first introduced in the 1950s by architect Paolo Solari is the ultimate urban planning solution to the problems of metropolitan growth. Continuing trends in the expansion of metropolitan areas have contributed to explosive growth of low-density suburban sprawl, the decay of inner-city urban areas, and finally the indiscriminate destruction of natural environments to make room for a human habitat system which is increasingly less efficient, convenient, and aesthetic. The concept of the arcology attempts to reverse those trends by providing a compact city infrastructure that works. What is an arcology? Featured in several science fiction works as the city of the future, an arcology is more than just a structure. A super building that contains everything you would expect to see in the current city. The arcology integrates living spaces and working spaces with transportation systems that connect it all. One of the fundamental differences is that it heavily involves the third dimension into city planning, whereas current planning is done by zoning commercial-slash-residential-slash-industrial in an ad hoc fashion well, by government committee through series of votes, demonstrations, bribes, and legal means applied in a reactive manner which fulfills actual requirements just as well as ad hoc design process. Naturally, the archaeology is simply what a city would be if it was to be designed by competent systems engineers of course, a feat easier said than done. Another advantage to designing cities from the perspective of an archaeology is that it forces you to take all scale levels into account in the design. This allows the archaeology to transition better as new technologies are put into place. On the national level, archaeologies would be constructed to connect well to other archaeologies, with effective transportation and distribution systems. Current cities have transportation problems. Many cities grow around ports. However, shipping is no longer the primary means for distributing goods. The United States has invested heavily in the highway system. However, around many cities these get tied up in rush hour congestion, resulting in delays and waste. Airports are usually built too far from the city to connect well to mass transit systems, or have been enveloped and throttled by the city and create a nuisance to nearby residents. On the personal level, much infrastructure for a living does not have flexibility for change. We are still using much of the same infrastructure developed over a century ago for power and telephone. Additional systems have sprouted up on top of these networks such as cable television and various wireless networks that compete for spectrum, and a myriad of PBX, fiber optics, etc. for corporations. Various combinations of water mains, sewage systems, natural gas pipelines. A modular arcology structure would need to be able to adapt to support new networks. The purpose of an arcology is to create a compact, organized structure for people to live and work. It should be designed to improve and maximize upon the quality of life of its residents, while also performing well economically, in production, and in development. The transportation system is one of the keys to making the system perform. This connective tissue accounts for how well most of the rest of the system can perform. Paolo Solari describes several arcology designs that could be used to replace major cities or serve well in several environmental settings. This project would create a tool that could be used to quantitatively analyze the benefits of replacing cities with arcologies. This report describes the systems engineering of a tool to perform systems engineering preliminary design and benefits analysis. Previous well-known works that tackle this task includes two open-ended games from Maxis now part of Electronic Arts that approach the problem from two different scales, SimCity and The Sims. Beyond that, there is not much published in the way of city and lifestyle simulation. This is probably partly because most of this analysis can be done more simply using historical data tracked by government statistical agencies, and because most of the simulation writers are more busy simulating more interesting things such as data and transportation networks. Not many people are in a position to design cities, however, almost everyone needs to work within the infrastructure of one so it would be worthwhile to create a model if only to serve as a dynamic demand generator used to plug input parameters into these data and transportation networks. Surely they can use historical data as inputs, but this breaks down when a system they are designing may have a significant effect on the input data. 
One item of study that this type of simulation makes feasible is the relationship between these data networks and transportation networks. For example, if a city decides to spend money upgrading their data infrastructure so more people might be able to telecommute to work, this may have a noticeable impact on the load on their mass transit system. The simulation could aid as a decision-making support tool that could actually tie the network and transportation models together.